What's happening, guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling review. So this week's going to be a little different from most weeks. I'm only going to do a review. I'm going to have some news and whatnot throughout the show, but no Impact report this week. I just have a lot going on on Sunday. Um, I'll talk about it later on in the video because it is wrestling related. Um, but anyway, first Impact in the new time slot, 10 p.m. to midnight. Yeesh. 98,000 viewers. Still ranked in the top 150. Gilmore Girls, which took the 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. time slot, didn't even rank in the top 150. It's, it, it sucked. I'm not going to lie. I watched the first hour on TV, and then I ended up watching the second hour yesterday evening after work. It, it's, it, it sucks, plain and simple. Um... I really think 9 to 11 p.m. would have been perfect had they had to move it. Just just very strange. I still think that Impact does have a plan in place. They probably told Pop, we're not going to re-up with you guys. So Pop said, all right, screw you guys. We're going to put you out of prime time. And hopefully that is uh, that's what happened rather than... Pop just moving them in hopes that they were going to gain traction being out of the primetime spot since you have a lot going on sports-wise Thursday. But I guess just time will tell. Um, they're, they're really expanding in the digital market impact, that is. So maybe this is where they're going to go. Maybe they'll go full digital. I mean, it's 2018. People are watching TV much differently than they did previously. I still think the Nielsen ratings need to be updated, do something differently. Everything can be tracked now. They don't need to do the way they do as far as measuring ratings go. I mean, Josh mentioned during the press pass that more people will view this show through DVR now, so they'll still basically get the same amount of viewers. Um, and during the press pass as well, Sammy Callahan was asked about the TV deal and things like that, and he still thinks that Impact is one big star away as much as people don't like Austin Aries, I think he definitely was an asset to the company. Um, we will see what the deal is, I'm sure, within the coming months. But losing him was still its still a big loss. He was the main focus for most shows. Um, but Sammy also criticized Pop TV, saying they're not really a wrestling network. I mean, they aren't going to have people tuning into Days of Our Lives from 7 to 8 or whatever time it runs previously and then all of a sudden tune into eight to impact wrestling at eight so i i get that point um but again we're just gonna have to wait and see um youtube viewership i checked all the views so far about 36 hours removed from impact had about 430,000 views last week's episode was around 500,000 at this time so a little lower but not not too crazy uh, the highest viewed video was Sue Young uses her demonic power on Allie, and that had 55,000 views. So now that we got that out of the way, we can go on to Impact. Uh, I thought it was a good show overall. Some things kind of swing and a miss, in my opinion. Um, but a lot of good things happened. Fantastic main event, uh, Johnny Impact and Phoenix, which we'll get to later on. But what a match, both men. Uh, we opened the show with Sammy Callahan versus Trevor Lee, two very good wrestlers. We had Scarlett Bordeaux out there observing from the stage. She had her chair, which we saw. Well, actually, I think it was Bound for Glory before it started. There were a lot of We Want Scarlett chants, and I think that happened actually throughout the entire tapings. But this was a really good match to open the show. I feel like all the parties involved in this match really benefited. Uh, obviously, the Chris brothers were at ringside with Sammy Callahan. Uh, we did get a great interaction between Dave Christ and Scarlett. At one point, Sammy called for the bat from Dave, but he was too distracted, you know, making eye contact and ogling uh, Scarlett from the, from the uh, ringside. So Jake pulled it out of his hand and goes, I got the bat. It's just good stuff, funny stuff. Um, Callahan did go over with the pile driver. Obviously, the numbers game became too much for Trevor Lee to handle. He did Despite losing, he did look good. He was able to capitalize on a few spots. He did hit a beautiful moonsault to the outside, and he did take care of all three men at one point. Um, so even though he did lose, he still looked good. So we're going to do a little fantasy booking here right now. I think Trevor Lee should be the one that Scarlett does pick 
in as her next adventure or whatever business uh, person. Um, I think that she should kind of take him and kind of turn his whole streak around. She did that with KM and Falva for a little bit. You know, they were losing, and then all of a sudden they got advice from her, and they went on their winning ways for that point in time. But um, I feel like Trevor Lee's big problem is is that he's a fantastic wrestler in the ring, but in Impact, they really haven't done much with his character, his look, things like that. Uh, you know, on the indies, he was he's very big in PWG, and his matches are absolutely fantastic, but... You don't need that character work because it's not really a televised show. So I really think that Impact's focus should be on the character. Maybe have Scarlet turn the Carolina Caveman into, you know, a clean-cut gentleman or something along those lines. Just completely change his character around. Um, so after the match, Brian Cage came out, roughed Callahan up a bit, was about to hit the drill claw, and then the Chris pulls Sammy to safety. So... I did have a thought with this whole Sammy Callahan, Brian Cage thing. I really think Sammy's win at Bound for Glory wasn't, um, it should have been a bigger thing. Granted, it was kind of in the middle of the card, so it wasn't seen as a big thing. But like when I was there and I saw Callahan pin Cage, I was like, holy shit, that's the first time Cage has been pinned. And it just should have been a bigger moment for him. But I think, I think they have something big here with Callahan. He's gone on to say numerous times that he wants to be the one to turn Impact Wrestling around. I think they need to give him the ball and let him run with it. So we obviously are going to get a title match at some point between Brian Cage and Sammy Callahan. You have Sammy Callahan go over, pick up the X Division Championship. I remember, or I don't know if you guys remember, I talked about a while back of bringing in more members of OVE, have them like a Ravens flock type deal. But no, I think we're going to make this bigger. We want to go NWO style. So rather than obviously WCW's version of the NWO, where it's a bunch of old men, basically, you bring all up and coming stars. You bring in a bunch of guys from Ohio, you know, Trey Miguel, Zachary Wentz. Sammy talked about Clayton Gaines on the Press Pass podcast. Just a bunch of guys like that. Make a group. Have them literally take over Impact Wrestling. Have Sammy pick up the uh, X Division Championship with the help of all these guys. So now you have a huge stable to close the show. Just kind of like, what the hell are we going to do now that OVE is basically taking over everything? Um, you have Sammy defend the X Division title for a while. Then he decides to go the option C route. He drops the X Division Championship. Now we have maybe a Super X Cup or something like that to determine a new X Division champion. Um, I think that would you can utilize a bunch of guys from the OVE stable, and bring in a bunch of other guys because we want to spotlight that X Division style wrestling again. Callahan goes on to face Johnny Impact. He eventually wins. Callahan's on top, calls himself best in the world, whatever. He's going on for a little while. He finally gets challenged by one Chris Jericho. We've seen a lot of hints. Callahan has called him out numerous times. Maybe we'll have those seeds planted on the Jericho cruise. But we have Jericho versus Callahan. Jericho eventually goes over Callahan, winning the title, and then they give it to Eli Drake. So that that's how I would I would like it to uh, to happen. I think a lot of people would be happy with Eli eventually capturing that title once again, um, and I think he deserves it. He's been a team player. No reason he shouldn't do it. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about that whole thing. Um, obviously, this could go over a month's period of a time, but I really think Callahan wants to turn this company around. Let's give him the ball and let him run with it. What's the worst that can happen? So we go backstage and we see King Irate after what the boss has told him. He's freaking out about not being able to get his hands on LAX. However, he has a plan, and we will find out later on in the evening what it was. Uh, then we see Gama Singh and Rohit Raju getting ready for their match. Then we have LAX versus the Heavenly Bodies. Um, Eli Drake decided to join Josh on commentary, kind of kicked on Callis off the headset. Um, good to have him out there. He, he was doing a good job. I enjoyed what he brought to the table. Uh, he did make a hilarious comment on commentary about lots of people suing Impact, so he decided to join the crowd. Um, I mean, the good match was good. I enjoyed it. They gave it a decent amount of time. Uh, unfortunately, I think uh, the commentary overshadowed the match a little bit because they were kind of preoccupied talking about the whole Eli Drake suing impact and all that stuff. 
Um, but there was a good showing from the Heavenly Bodies. They were able to get a bunch of moves in. It looked like we saw a bunch of new moves from LAX. They were always fantastic to watch. Obviously, they go over with the Street Sweeper. Um, so, yeah, that, that was good. Um, I'm sure most of you know by now that James Ellsworth wasn't originally supposed to be Eli Drake's opponent at Bound for Glory. Um, and I think this article came out on Wrestling Inc. It was original, uh, saying, basically, many are wondering if this was a one-off appearance for Ellsworth in Impact or if he has signed a long-term deal. Ellsworth addressed his Impact status on his Duh cast hosted by the Wrestling Perspective podcast. Ellsworth said, I will not answer that. I have a very good relationship with Impact Wrestling. Love Sonjay Dutt, Jimmy Jacobs. I don't really know Scott Demore and Don Callis too well, but I have met Scott Demore a handful of times and always got along with him. I had a lot of fun there and had a great time, but I'm not going to say whether or not they offered me a contract. I want people to not be sure with James Ellsworth. Am I going to show up on Impact? Am I going to show up at WWE? I want the dirt sheets to keep guessing. So as of right now, it looks like Ellsworth isn't signed to anything. Um... Originally, Eli Drake's opponent was rumored to be Joey Janela, um, and then at one point it was going to be low-key because Janela had gotten hurt. I mean, had they brought Janela in, I think that would have been fantastic, just the fact to see him there, but that's a tough match to book. Um, do you have Joey Janela go over the veteran and the one-time face of the company, uh, or do you just have Eli win and squash new talent that you're bringing in? So I'm kind of glad they went the route they did just for that aspect of it. Uh, but once Joey Janela is healed up, I believe he had surgery yesterday. He's definitely a person to bring in. I think his style fits in really well with Impact Wrestling. I would love to see him versus Sammy Callahan, Pentagon. Just There's so much potential with him, and he's got a huge following on the indies. So I think that would be, be great. I mean, he just announced uh, stuff for Joey Janela's spring break, so... If he, or when he comes back healthy, definitely someone Impact should look into picking up. Uh, then we go backstage, and we have Taya and Tessa. Te Taya is, uh, I guess, sitting in the, the women's locker room. I guess that's what it was. Tessa comes barging through the door. Tessa's obviously annoyed about Taya's comments from last week. She says she doesn't care what Taya has to say. And Taya goes, well, apparently you do if you came busting in here. Tessa, obviously not worried about Taya, says she gives her a rematch next week. Taya finishes by saying, I'll see you next Thursday. That was funny. Good segment. I liked it. Good interaction between the two, and that should be a good match, a rematch from Bound for Glory next week. Uh, so then we have LAX bumping into Matt Seidel and Ethan Page backstage. Eh, I don't know. This really didn't do anything for me. It was kind of an odd segment, uh, but this sets up a title match for next week. Didn't make any sense here. It's just strange that they, Ethan Page and Matt Seidel, have teamed together once in a losing effort, and then they're in a tag team title match. Just just weird. I don't know. It should be a good match, but just weird the way it came about. Uh, then we have a video package for Phoenix, kind of hyping up the main event. And then we see Willie Mack and Rich Swan backstage. Kind of another segment that I don't know. I, I just... I feel like they could have went about it a little differently. Uh, they were basically toasting to things. Both of them had a drink. Willie says that next week in his singles debut match, he wants to face Rich Swan. They should that should be a great match. Looking forward to that. Um, but again, face versus face match. I'm sh I would hope they would build something from it. Um, but we will see next week. Like I said, that should be a great match. Willie Mack had a fantastic reception at Bound for Glory, making his debut. Uh, then we had Gama Singh versus Rohit Raju. Um, Gama introduced himself, which was hilarious. He went down and listed a whole bunch of his uh, accomplishments. I got a good kick out of it. It did go a, quite a little ways or quite a little over what it should have gone, but it did draw some heat, so that was probably the whole point of it. The match, however, it was just flat. The crowd was really not into it. Um, I mean, outside of Gama getting some offense in and the you still got a chance. I believe that's what it was. Uh, but Rohit was about to take care of Gama, and is he gets interrupted by Gama Singh Jr. Apparently, and he hits a gut buster on Rohit, which was not very pretty looking. And then Gama pins him, and they 
he counts to three. All three men raised hands and left the ring. Eh. It, it just it, it just really took the crowd out of it. Like, yeah, like the crowd just took a huge nap during this. It, it wasn't a great segment. Um, recently, Andre Corbiel had an interview with Gama Singh Jr., so I'm going to leave a link in the comment section below for you guys to check out. Um, it was a good interview, so worth checking out. One of Impact's newest stars. Uh, we still have two other members of the Hit Squad on the Impact Wrestling roster page, so I don't know if we're ever going to see those two or what the deal with Gersinder Singh is. Or, who knows? Up in the air, it's, I, I just feel like Impact's going to have a tough time having this gain traction. The crowd just seems like they're not into it with any of the Desi Hit Squad segments, but hopefully they're able to turn this around and we get something interesting from it. Uh, then we have Johnny Impact backstage with McKenzie, and he's basically hyping the main event. Scarlett is sitting in a bathtub, and she is watching some of the talent search videos. And then we get to watch those videos, and uh, they were interesting. But I can't say I'm surprised there. Up next, we have a tag team match, Falaba and KM versus Moose and Killer Cross. Not a surprise, KM and Falaba get a great reaction. I hope at one point that we do get a tag team title run with these two men. I just think they deserve it. The crowd loves them. Why not give them a shot? Obviously down the road because the tag team title scene looks like it's going to heat up soon. So we will uh, we'll talk about that a little later on. Uh, one point, KM did a flip dive over the top rope onto Cross and Moose. Um, it, he did not land pretty. It looked like his foot hit the guardrail. Obviously, he's barefoot now. And then his back hit the concrete. There's not much room between the ring and the guardrail at the Melrose Ballroom. And just like a very small section of it is padded. So did not look pretty. Um, at one point, Cross and Moose are in control. Eddie Edwards comes out from the crowd, grabs Moose off the apron, pulls him back through the crowd and out. Uh, Cross left alone by himself. I think he takes care of Falaba, throws him to the outside, and then chokes out KM for the win. So... Good thing there that Killer Cross still looks strong. Um, kind of sucks that two versus one. Uh, it didn't really benefit KM and Fala Ba, but I guess they really don't need it at this point. It's more for Killer Cross to look dominating, which we will see a little more of him later on. Uh, after the match, we get to see the actual fight between Moose and Eddie Edwards, which escalated all the way to the roof. Um, eventually, Moose leaves Eddie Edwards outside, and he goes back inside. Uh, it was good that we actually got to see them battle it out, and we didn't just see Eddie pull Moose to the back, and that was the end of it. Um, but, yeah, I think it would have been better had commentary not been talking during the battle. I don't know. It just kind of took took a little bit out of it. It would have less of a real, you know, attack feel. Uh, then we had the GW and Flashback, AJ Styles and Samoa Joe versus Sting and Kevin Nash. Yeah. And we got a teaser video for Jordan Grace. We see her working out in the gym gonna be great i'm very much looking forward to her debut um i will actually see her sunday i'm going to a women's wrestling revolution show um she will be facing jazz for the north america or nwa women's championship so that should be a fantastic match uh, i think they have something special here bringing in jordan grace but again a really good signing by impact bring in new stars that's really what they need to do young up-and-coming talent that's the, that should be their focus because eventually you're going to find that one star that's just going to shine and help bring eyes to the product. Then we go back up to the roof where Eddie Edwards is. He is talking to Kenny. Alicia comes up. She goes, what the hell are you doing? You're talking to yourself again, which he was talking to the kendo stick. Um, so she's yelling at him, and then he just kisses her. He, she was telling him he drives her crazy, and then he kisses her and says that she's the one that drives him crazy. Then we have... Kiera versus Sue Young. So this is the second time we've seen this match in the last month. The match was just basically made so we could further the alley and her demonic side. Uh, Sue Young goes for the panic switch on the ramp. Alley pulls Kiera away. At this point, Sue Young is, I think, staring opposite side, and all of a sudden, Alley is yelling at her. And Sue Young turns around, and Alley kind of looks at her and backs away she gets that look in her eyes she heads to the back telling kiara she can't help her sue then hits a draping pedigree and then the panic switch for the win so again just to further this alley storyline some more uh should be good 
looking forward to it. I like this little segment there. They're just adding little bits and pieces. Eventually, we're going to get this whole thing with Rosemary when she's back, and it's going to be it's going to be fantastic. But that's another thing that uh, I've mentioned to people is that I think losing Rosemary for all those months definitely took a, or hurt Impact Wrestling a lot because she has such a huge following and fan base that it's 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 very very detrimental to Impact. Um, but when she comes back, I think we're going to see some more positive from that. Then we have the main event. World Championship match. Johnny Impact defends against Phoenix. Fantastic match. Just And this is one thing that Impact Wrestling has really done with the new the Golden Bookers, so to speak, is that we have gotten so many quality wrestling matches. We almost get one a show, but at least a handful a month. And uh, we didn't really get that in the past, so that's definitely been great. It's, it's 2018 is just the year of rebuilding. Um, this is what Rose said to me when I was talking to him. And then 2019 is really when the expectations sit in. So I think, you know, oh, we get a lot caught up in a lot of things on impact this year, but I think we really need to trust the two men in charge and hope that 2019 is their year. Um, but yeah, back to the match, both men, fantastic reaction. We got Johnny impact. Let's go Phoenix chant throughout the match. Um, the athleticism and just high-flying ability of both men, absolutely amazing. Phoenix just always impresses me in the ring. Just his his ability to walk the ropes and his high spots and just the quality that he brings is very good. He had a huge springboard Hurricane Rana to Johnny Impact at one point. It was just absolutely beautiful. Uh, Phoenix had Johnny in a muscle buster position. Johnny's able to counter that into a DDT, and then he puts Phoenix away with Starship Pain to retain the championship. Um, so I think a lot of people will complain about Starship Pain that it doesn't look like it's that impactful of a move, no pun intended. But you got to think, I mean, Jeff Hardy's Swanton Bomb, it's, he's only landing a, a portion of his body on him. It's its very similar. Um, so I, I he... he does the move very nicely it, it looks good um and that's that so johnny impact leaves the ring phoenix is left alone all of a sudden the ogs come out and attack him pentagon comes out with a chair for the save uh so that looks like it's setting up the ogs versus the lucha brothers if this transitions to the lucha brothers versus lax for the tag team championships take my money that, that should be a match saved for, like, homecoming or something like that. That's definitely a pay-per-view quality match that will absolutely blow the doors off the place. So hopefully that is where it's going to eventually go. Um, and then we cut to Killer Cross backstage, and he's cutting a hell of a promo. And he walks away from the camera. Camera pans down, and we see Johnny Impact laid out with Killer Cross's calling card on top of him. So I think that's announced. I forget what they're calling it. They're doing one of their specials, um, I think, in two weeks. So it's going to be Killer Cross versus Johnny Impact for the championship. Um, I don't see Killer Cross going over here, unfortunately. I think November 8th is the date that sticks out. Come on. Yeah, November 8th, I think it is, um, which I guess that's – Probably the last date of the New York tapings because the weekend after that, the tapings in Las Vegas take place. So I think that's the last show. Um, but yeah, no, that, sh that should be a fantastic match. I don't know how... I, I hope Killer Cross is able to look strong, even in defeat. Like I said, I don't think they're going to drop the title from Johnny already. But uh, it's going to be a huge match for Killer Cross. It seems like him and Moose are kind of going to be together but they're going to do their own separate things now with cross and johnny and the edwards and moose match which i heard that they did tape a match during the tapings and it was a fantastic match so i'm looking forward to that this should be a good match um a lot of good stuff coming in the up in the upcoming weeks however a 10 p.m time slot is a killer so hopefully impact has a plan and uh we will see so that is pretty much all I have for you guys today. Again, no impact report tomorrow. I will be attending a women's indie show and then Evolution afterward. So got to support the women, uh, especially with WWE's plan to continue to go to Saudi Arabia. But that's a completely different topic or for a completely different time. So thanks for checking out my video. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.